That's going to be my turn by now. My okay. turn in progress. That would be lovely if you would take minutes, Susan. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so Judy has sent the minutes from the January meeting. Um, I have one minor correction, which has to do with the date, which I think I sent out. Um, any, is there anything else anybody would like to amend? No. Okay, in that case, may I have a motion to uh, approve? So moved. I'll second. All in favor, aye. aye. So the site plan review for 149 Christian Lane. Judy, thanks for sending that new stuff. Um, Just what you wanted. Well, I looked at it five minutes ago, two minutes ago. Uh, I have a question which has nothing to do with historic preservation. Why are they proposing to, instead of having a nice cedar wooden fence to have a chain link fence with plastic on it? They're not. Um, there was some thought that an eight foot post fence would look like a fortress. It would, and, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's gonna be around the whole property. It's gonna. Right, okay. I, so, so the request was to see, look at other fence styles to see that there would be anything that would be less intrusive. Cause I really personally think that would be very intimidating, but um, okay. I think we will leave it up to the abutters. Okay. I also, Probably. I, I don't know. The, the abutters would like to have it enclosed in a concrete box. Probably. I know the abutters would no. like it to go away. Would like it to go away, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, uh, they've they've come around. She's the applicant has done a lot of work to improve from the original application, but it's still squeezing a very big thing on a very small lot or a bigger thing than should go on that size lot. It's very long and narrow. Did, does anybody else have anything um, substantive to say as compared to my? <laughs> um, long and narrow, but it's beyond. They are putting up a new barn, but that the rest of the buildings are hoop houses. That land has been farmed. The barn is going right up fairly close to where the houses are. Um, you mean the houses on the on that property? Well, yeah, I mean, not, I the mean neighbor's fairly, houses. not too far set back from Christian Lane is what I really meant. Yeah. Adequately set back but not way back in the lot. Hmm. Didn't sound like they were going that deep for the barn, the slab foundation or something. I think so. I mean, the only concern I can think of is subsurface remains or something. It's on the flip lane, which might've been used as farmland by all sorts the of folks. Con the CONCOM signed off, so I assume it's okay. Okay. I was also amused that they're going to plant clethra and red twig dogwood as close to each other as they are because somebody's going to be doing a whole lot of pruning. <laughs> but but they're really nice plants. <laughs> no, they are. Is. I I think of clethra. I don't know the I don't know the holly. Does it, does somebody anybody know what inkberry holly is? It's mm. is it is it a good? <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. They're all they're all native. Um, well, they're not native to town, but they are native to somewhere on the East Coast. Yeah. 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 Um, it doesn't really make them native, but. No, but. Well, but it makes them more native than Japanese honeysuckle. Exactly. Yeah, you know? right. And they're not <laughs> invasive. They, right. They're not right. arborvitae, put it that way. <laughs> right. Right. Well, the inkberry, I'm sure you've seen it. It's a, it's a sort of semi evergreen. It's often I may, I may actually hedges. have it. <laughs> I may have it sometimes. I don't know. Um, yeah, we, but, we um, have some, it's very dense. It gets quite thick. For, oh, for, so it's good for birds. Good for birds. Lots of seeds, lots of uh, 
fruiting bodies for birds yeah. to, clean, to clean them off. So is, um, and obviously much better than those, those uh, things that were planted at the other Christian Lane site, which are still not even three feet tall, if I'm measuring. Right now. Yeah. Um, that, that is still being negotiated. Okay. So, Painfully. <laughs> good, good. good. Um, is there any reason then to, to say anything more in the letter than the usual if you find something that looks uh, archaeological when you're as you're digging, stop digging. It sounds like it. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, I will do that then. Um, Judy, is there anything else coming down the pike for a site review that might? Not that I know. Of. Yay. Yeah, that's good. That's good yeah, for you. I actually, hadn't focused on that. Yeah. No, I don't think it's. I don't know of one. Would be okay. nice to have a break. Um, Does anybody know anything about the construction that's happening down Chestnut Plain Road at the site of that, you know, house that got taken down? You mean where, know, where Richie Richie Down Richie past Thayer. Claverack, down past Claverack on the left-hand side on the rise. Yeah, Richie Thayer seems to be grading right. for a foundation. Don't you think yeah. that's or what's going on? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I, I meant to look at the assessor's maps, although as I learned yesterday, I'm not, I can't, I'm not sure if, it, it must be beyond the property that Dan Dennehy owns. It's part of, it. I believe it was one of the house lots that was set off from the Kennedy property, um, you know, yes, that the Franklin above, Land Trust took over, above. which is on both sides of the road there. I think the family reserved uh, a couple of spots there in case they wanted to put in a house. I think I think that that's what's going on. Yeah, it looks like a driveway and a house foundation. Well, I, I also continue to wonder. You know, there's there's the big white house, the one that with the blue shutters that now has the big peace flag, which belonged to the whites. So it is the white house. The whites. Yeah, it's right. It was Salmon White's house. Yeah, and um, right. Um, I can't figure out what's going on in the south lot they sold off because they started doing something what five years ago but no one's ever finishing it <laughs> no, well, that's it the guy who died right in the didn't he die in the scuba accident yeah. he, yes that's steve Cox, the electrician who died oh he was he was building there i didn't yeah. realize well, he that. was i think he bought it with the intention of building a house and then and flipping started sort of and then I think there was a divorce and I don't know where things stand now, but he's not around to ask. Yeah. No, I see. I didn't, I hadn't actually looked to see who owned it. Um, well, I hope, I hope that whatever goes in both sites is decent looking. The, the, the house built to the north of the white, the white house is really quite nice looking, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, and it has a beautiful shed, really beautiful. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so to the center school, d does, um, just in case, um, in case anyone isn't aware of this, the center school visioning committee made its report, what, three years ago? Judy, no, does that sound like actually, it seems like it. it was just about a year ago. You only made your report a year ago. <laughs> You're on COVID time. I am on COVID time. Well, <laughs> as I wrote you about something else, I hadn't. I have apparently been checking our hard copy mail at six month intervals, <laughs> you know, which is really not like me. You know? So, um, the only people who mail us letters in envelopes are the planning board and the Massachusetts Historical Commission. We'd never get mail from anybody else. <laughs> Well, except so, the except the reminder and the Republican, which really uh, annoys well, me. Uh, well, we don't get that in the in the mail slot in the mails cubby in the town offices. Oh, I see. They, oh, I they, see. May, get, I see. they may get one copy, but we we, we don't all get copies. Um, 
So this select board um, issued a request for information in the fall. I mean, Brian Domina did, and apparently got two responses. The response simply means we might be interested in doing something with this building. And actually, yes, uh, no, no, go, go ahead. ahead. That's, that's all I know. What? Well, they said what they were at the time at the meeting, and it sounded to me like people just wrote some people just sent in ideas of what they thought would be nice without really actually intending to do it. So uh -huh. I don't know. Was, you mean you like, actually, you like, were actually I'd like asked. a coffee shop near my house. Why don't you put one of those in? Uh, yeah, well, a, it's more a little like, more than that, I think. Yeah, you know, <laughs> affordable daycare and um, really good coffee. Yeah. <laughs> no. I don't know. The staff they, life. They, they were. They didn't sound like somebody was seriously intending to develop it. I don't know because that none of them sounded like they would make any money. No. Well, I was I was actually disappointed because I got Scott Kider to go look at it, who, as some of you know, was a guy with a hammer when he first started working for Neil and me, and now he Scott is an empire <laughs> based in Florence, um, and he went. Um, but it, he must not have thought it was something that he would do because he does have a bench. He does have a developer uh, development group now. Um, but anyway, the select board is um, lurching towards issuing a request for proposal. And um, at about the same minute, I think 10 days ago, Judy and I each thought, even though we've written to them before about preserving the building, we should do that again. Um, so what more just do we need more discussion about that i mean i quickly read through the letter it seems okay um so. the only suggestion i had was in the i guess it's the second full paragraph um we anticipate that the developer of the center school i would add whether the lessee or the town just to point out that the town could be interested in this too. I, I had actually had whoever that might be, but your point is your addition is better. <laughs> um. I should just say that it was sheer happenstance that I found this 20-year-old um, policy <laughs> that the select board had established about historic, the his town's historic buildings. I was uh, with Derek Smith and Allison in the um, town offices going through different sets of uh, the town's documents and came across this. I was looking for something completely different. and. Um, I thought that was good. I don't know who was on the select board in 1991. Anything was, else? That but, was when they got the grants for the inventories. And I think they were seriously thinking about preservation. And Adelia's right. husband, Fred, was chair of the select board, I think, then. Makes sense. Um, anything else anybody wants to add? Is this OK? <laughs> Thank you for doing it. Yes, thank you. Well, uh, you're welcome. I, I um, Brian sent out a little, a little uh, nasty scolding message uh, ten days ago, a couple of weeks ago, which was not directed at us I, at, at all. It was directed at the town committees that don't post minutes and don't post, you know, mm. um, so on and so forth. But it made me think that our common practice of deciding we would write a letter sometimes more complicated this and then editing it by email afterwards is actually not seem a little is a little gray <laughs> on the um, on the open meeting area yeah i think it's all right if you've already decided that you want if to send decided a letter what and, you have, and and essentially what you are going to say yeah, which is what yeah. we have done but yeah yeah but um, um if you're if you're starting from scratch it's not not a good idea right um, okay, well, I will send this off. Thank you all. So, Allison, are you going to show us 
what you've learned how to do with this mass GIS program. I, I think I have sent it, set this up so anybody can share. Good, okay. Yes, I, I thought my, um, my, my task was just to talk briefly about LIDAR. Oh. Uh, Alan, it, well, it involves the mass mapping. So yeah. it's that too. Alan, Alan knows more about this really than I do. And he certainly knows more about it from an archeological perspective. But I've been, Alan, you'll recall I, I was Jones in to get a hold of the access to this LIDAR thing. And I didn't realize that it was already right here on this mass mapping site. So uh, shall I share my screen here? Let's do that. Let's hope it works. And I wrote to you all, um, did I not, that I wrote to you that the student Zachary could come show us what else he's learned next month, right? Yes. And we were all here for his thing, right? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Well, uh, let me share my screen here. Come on. Uh huh. It's asking me some funny. I have a new laptop, which I have not used for things before. Huh, it's not letting me do it for security reasons. What the hell? Uh, hold on. Can you guys see anything here? No, I have checked multiple participants can share simultaneously. That is I'm the right thing to check. Me. It's, it's just, not uh, you. no, it's, it's asking me a security question that I just don't know even how to answer. Shoot. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how to get past this. Do you want me to try to do it? Or do you think it's got nothing to do with sharing? It's got to do with the program. It has to do with this new version of Mac and which I, as I say, I only got this computer last week. It needs me to grant access. Uh, hold on. It sounds like what I was kvetching about yesterday when I couldn't send photographs. Yeah, and it's not recognizing Zoom for some reason. It doesn't like Zoom. None of us like Zoom. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure how to get past this. You guys want to just talk amongst yourself? Do you have something to move on to? I'll go ask Leslie if she knows how to get past this. Go ahead. Can you do that? Go ahead. And I'll come back to you in a minute. Yes. All right. Now it looks like we lost her completely. For a while. I think that's what she meant to do. I think she's taking, uh, Leslie, <laughs> I'm going to stop recording for a minute. The meeting is momentarily in a pause. Okay, now I'm recording again. Well, I just, I, I, I may have written this to you, but I definitely had the impression that the very long list of references about stone walls that I sent after a <laughs> meeting to Zachary inspired him to think differently and maybe more broadly about his project because he, when he wrote and said March would work, he said, I have found many more stone walls already. Oh, but, excellent. And I, I think probably one of the problems was simply remember he had limited his search to yeah. a fairly shallow slope. Yeah. And that, um, hello, Leslie. Hi, sorry guys. <laughs> Trying to have right. being tech support here. I'm gonna have to leave and be back. She's gone again. Yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> well, I can't find this thing anyway. She's, oh, wait. I have found it.
All right, we'll give it one more shot here. I'm sorry, guys. Well, I have, and I have All found right. the, the email where you sent the link. No, I got yeah. it. it. It required oh. me somehow oh. to update my uh, software, which is only a week old. So what the hell? <laughs> Are you seeing my screen? Yes. So the Zoom message right now. But... Are you seeing my screen now? We're yes. A Zoom. We're yeah. seeing the, the Zoom link page. Oh, we're, yeah, but we're seeing something, which is an improvement. You guys it there? Says, yeah. Yeah, we're seeing the, you can't hear us? No, I hear you. Yeah, we're Are you seeing, seeing the topo map? No, we're seeing the Zoom link screen page. It says I'm screen sharing. There yes. it is. There it is. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Page, yep. Okay, all right. How about that? Are you seeing the topo? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, all right. So uh, I'm at uh, this, uh, if you look at the address line here, the maps.massgis state system. I'm gonna move my, your photos here. And when you, when you go online to the system, it gives you a map of Massachusetts and um, you need to zoom into whatever part of the state you wanna look at. And I'm, I'm obviously zooming in here to uh, Waitley and uh, I think we all recognize where that is right there. Mm -hmm. Does everybody see? Mm -hmm. There's a school right there. Here's where I am. Donna's down yep. here. Alan's yep. off the map and Susan's off the map. But um, what, what you have on the right-hand side are all kinds of imaging options from um, conservation features, cultural features, environmental monitoring features. Uh, so this is a super interesting thing to explore. And what it allows you to do is combine, um, so it's, it's almost limitless. You can overlay and combine those features with each other uh, to explore whatever the topic is you wanna, you wanna look at. So if you look down here, can you see where I'm circling these three options here? Mm -hmm. I've activated the USGS topo map for our area, plus the shaded relief layer, uh, LIDAR layer, and the property tax parcels boundary from the town. You've, you're probably all familiar with that, the lines for all the parcels um, that you see on the assessor's site. So LIDAR, uh, for those of you who haven't heard much about it, it's, it's been on TV lately, like on the National Geographic channel. It's a light imaging system. Like radar uses sound to bounce off hard services to create images. We all kind of understand how that works. Um, this is using laser or light uh, that is bounced from, the, it's done for, from an aerial situation, bounced off the surface of the earth to create three-dimensional um, imaging of that surface. And you, it can be manipulated in all kinds of ways to show uh, pollutants, for example. It can show hard surfaces. Um, but this map that we're looking at here is showing us, will show us geology. So I'm gonna switch now here from the USGS. Um, and I have USGS at the top of this triad here. You can just by dragging these things, turn it into the LIDAR layer, which is exactly the same as we we're just looking at. It has just removed, I'll go back. So if you keep your eye on where the school is and Swamp Road and everything. So we're gonna mm -hmm. go from the topo to the LIDAR. Does that help orient you? So this is Swamp Road peeling off. Here's Christian Lane and the Triangle Cemetery is here. And this is Chestnut Plain Road going down to Donna's and down to where we were just talking about. Um, and then you can also uh, then, oops, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, you can then apply the property lines on top of the LIDAR to further orient you um, to what you might be looking at, but I'm gonna put that away. But what this, I'm not, and now we're gonna zoom in because I'm just gonna show you uh, you can't zoom in very far with this. I have a feeling that the government 
Alan, maybe you agree, is sort of prohibiting us from seeing things too closely. Um, but you can get a really interesting topographic picture of, of this area. So, okay, so here we are. Here's Christian Lane and North Street and Chestnut Plain Road here. And this is so sensitive that it can, it can map uh, a question of inches. When you look at a topo map, those gradients tend to be um, five feet, 10 feet, you know, pretty big jumps in gradients. This gives you the surface in really minute detail. So we can zoom in, uh, we can look at Judy's, Judy's uh, childhood home here. This is, a, is it 210, 206? What number is this, Judy? Uh, 207. Oh, seven. It's, seven. it's an odd it's, number. It's an <laughs> yeah. odd number, right. So it doesn't show us the houses because it's going through the houses, through the wooden structures and just showing us the geology, but it does show us house pads. So the center school is right here and you yeah. can see the pad that that sits on. You can even see the milk bottle pad, which is this circle here. Here's the cemetery and you can clearly see the mounds from each grave that's been put in. It's an, I can't go too much. Yeah, see, it defaults when you try to go too close. Um, but I think you can see the texture here. These are all the mounds of everybody who's planted in the cemetery. And Over you, can here, see the, you can see the terracing in front of your here's house. Here's my house. This crazy wedding there, cake there terracing. Isn't of, there isn't a lot of, there isn't a lot of terracing in Waitley. <laughs> no, <laughs> it shows you very clearly um, the dingle and what the topography of this valley looks like. It shows you, this is our, the, our farm. This is the pond right here. I'll, I'll switch back just so you can see for a second. So there's the pond, there's the pond. You can see our orchard and all the rows and there's a topographic difference from where the tractor drives and where the trees are. It's just a question of inches. So it gives you all of that texture, all the texture in our blueberry uh, area. Judy, it shows some kind of remnant of texture here in this field, which is part of your grandfather's property out here that I don't think is visible now and suggests that at one time, this was divided into some kind of grid, probably agricultural squares. That, Maybe was, an, um, that was onions and cucumbers. Right. But do you yeah, all see how that has a pattern to it? It has rectangles. It has yeah. rectangles yeah. and then even corduroy within the rectangles, like there, there were rows there. Yeah, these are mulch piles of ours that are showing up whenever this photo was taken. It, it picked up on or dirt piles. It picked up on these dirt piles. Um, so it, and, and here is the foundation for a barn. This is a stone. Right, Judy, this is in back of that was, in back that was the, the hay barn, that, the okay. hay barn that, that collapsed. Right. So it's a super interesting thing and it can show you and here this shows on our field, which looks like nothing but hay now. It clearly shows us where the raspberry rows used to be and are now invisible with the naked eye, but you can see where Hoxie had um, raspberry. Yeah. So this is a super interesting thing over here at the Long's house. You can see the paddocks for the horses that they've got back there. This is the the Long's horse field, but you can yeah, explore yeah. this. And as long as you can sort of, here's the Waitley Inn and here's Haydenville Road shooting off to the West. Um, there's all kinds of things to sort of look at and, and that are revealed here that are not seen from an aerial photo because we've removed all the trees. We don't have any trees blocking our view. That's a problem in New England. Um, and it will also show you um, cellar holes and things Derricka would like to see that. So, so I should have I should have used this before I was slipping and sliding on the hill behind Mary and Simon's well, house can, yesterday, looking for it. those damn, looking at those foundations. I was photographing. Well, let's go. Let's go. Let's go down the street. We'll go down. Sorry, Christian everybody Lane. else, but it was. Here's you know. Road. Yep, <laughs> we can go down. Here's here's um here's where Westbrook comes in. Okay, this is right. Westbrook Road. Right. Uh, coming into and coming into Chestnut Plain right here. Here's Westbrook and the bridge. The bridge is somehow invisible. They, they, Interesting. They, they won't they won't show the concrete, so it looks as if there's a you know missing bridge. But this is the the stream bed for Westbrook coming down. You can see what a ravine this is. This is the sand pit situation back up here. 
um, with, I don't know what's going on with this. This is some kind of piles of things that are there, but you're um, found, oh, I can't get too close. Yeah, but it's, your it's gonna be hard. Would be visible, Judy, uh, Donna, you could look down here and pretty much see where those foundations and those pads would show up. Yeah. Here's, here's where Westbrook was rerouted. You know, when they put 91 in, they rerouted the stream, but you can see on the other side where the stream used to go. Let me back up and just, Judy, you'll, you'll enjoy this. We were talking about Hopewell and the Straits. Yeah. Um, this imaging so clearly shows where... Um, uh, the Straits, where, yeah. Yeah, Hope sorry. Here we go. The where So here's the river. Here's yeah. the overpass over 91 by the transfer station. Here's uh, Bartlett's Corner and so forth down here. Here is this mm -hmm. topographic, it's really an old river meander. Um, this is Hopewell Hill, Donna. So yeah, I see. If you're heading east to west. All of this rise was referred to as Hopewell Hill. So you know, exploring this is is pretty cool, um, and and to me, it's just endlessly, endlessly interesting. Um, but I wanted to show you about the stone walls. So let's go. Um, let's go back to just my neck of the woods because I know this pretty well. Um, we're going to look at, here's, here's our, our Apple Orchard, well, let's go, here, here's North Street right here, here's my house, here's the Apple Orchard, and then, and then we start to go uphill in back of this Apple Orchard. This line right here is really the level of the bed of Lake Hitchcock, so at this 300 uh, foot level, we leave the, the sediments from the lake and we kind of go uphill. These are what we call our upper fields, and You'll notice down below about the 300 foot level, or you, you may know, like at Judy's house, there aren't a lot of stone walls because there isn't a lot of surface stone. It is buried underneath those Lake Hitchcock sediments. Uh, but as you go uphill, the land becomes rockier. And so the material for building stones is there. And I'm gonna switch over to a PDF in a minute and show you um, uh, where those walls are. But if we look at, if we look at, uh, zoom in on these fields here, we can see straight lines that are apparently in the middle of woods. You see these lines like right here yeah. and they're edging mm -hmm. this field, straight lines here. Uh, they mm -hmm. appear to be almost like scars, you know, if you were gonna have an incision mm -hmm. that healed, you can see they're raised lines. These are not natural and we don't live in a place where there's canals or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, any kind of natural topographic thing that would create lines like that. We haven't had UFOs here in quite a while to create any of this, but there are these lines running through the woods and they are in that you will find that they're running all over the place. Yeah. Um, here, for example, here's, here's our backfield and Dickinson Hill Road is back here. Um, so you can clearly see these lines. And, and so behind, if we go further west, we hit Dickinson Hill Road, which is, here's, um, uh, uh, the Ninja Turtle people, right? Alice's homestead, or Gene Atkins and Peter Laird live here. Right. And we descend down Dickinson Hill Road, turns right. to dirt here. And this scraggy bit, the whole left half of this map is Mount Esther in all its ridgy topography. It's quite a rugged place. It's quite steep. But if we zoom in, even here, we can start to see really straight lines that are going over all of the topography. See, here's one here, here's one here. We move north. Can you spot them? Here's one here. Mm -hmm. yeah. they're, they're really quite obvious. And, and these are even parallel, which is, is again, even more man-made looking. So that's just to orient you to, to the two things I'm gonna show you in this PDF. So let me switch uh, to PDF I made right here. All right, so we're gonna go back to the beginning here. Um, so walls, can you see this picture of this wall? This is the wall at my house along my driveway. LIDAR doesn't care whether the wall was built yesterday or a thousand years ago. It will show a wall as a wall. And indeed it does show this wall. This is an interesting wall because it's built out of the stone that is right up above, at, above that 300 foot line. I call this this green stone that we have that's pretty specific to this property and in the immediate area. You see it has this blue green color. Mm -hmm. um, 
here's a wall in our woods. It is, it is made of this green stone. And so we know in our woods, the closest walls to the houses, to the civilized part of our property, a lot of our walls have clearly been borrowed from, scavenged, cannibalized for material. And I think that's quite common and it's still happening today. People will take apart walls to use to build new walls. But you know, probably uh, 19th century or early 20th century, these walls weren't needed for their original purpose anymore. Um, and so if you needed a load of stone to build a wall for Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Wells, they would go out to these walls and take down the walls. And so we, instead of having a three foot wall, you can see the vestiges on the ground of where a wall used to be with maybe only the most giant rocks left behind, the ones that were too big for you know, two guys to pick up. But so, so there's a scavenge wall thing. This is a wall. Um, it happens to be in Poundle, Vermont, but I put this picture in to show you there are different kinds of walls. And that's one thing uh, the kid, Nate. Zach, Zachary. Zach, Zach was, you know, kind of thinking about walls that were made by farmers who were clearing, you know, for agricultural purposes. This is indeed one of those walls. Poundle is in a rich limestone quartzite area, and these are quartzite boulders. This looks very different than what you would find in Waitley. These are all kind of homogenous quartzite. Some of them have been glacially rounded, but this is not a wall that anybody built as an obstacle to prevent sheep or cows or humans, because obviously a sheep could just trot right over this. This is a wall that was created to get the stones out of the field and to the edge, almost like sweeping them aside and maybe to mark the, uh, the property line that divided it. But it's not a, it's not a impediment wall. It's more of a um, refuse kind of wall. Uh, so here's a wall on top of Mount Esther. This is, this is a made from surf, uh, surface rock. This is very full of quartzite. And this, this is indeed what is on the top of Mount Esther in this area. So it's this white, quartzite. Um, and this is a wall. Uh, it's one of those parallel lines we're looking at. This thing is, is almost taller than me, not that that's so tall, but this is a five foot wall. So, and this is carefully built to be upright. And it's only a, in at the top one stone wide. It might be two stone wide at the bottom, but this is a wall that was not made to, you know, so the guy could plow the field for corn. This is a wall that was meant to keep sheep and cows from going from your, your side to the neighbor's side. And the whole mountain is um, gridded with these amazing walls that are still standing. No one much ever goes up there, but they're just beautiful things. And a wall this high is really something else. So they are amazing, amazing things. So I'm going to show you, this is a, you know, let's call this a topo map of the same area. This is, this is the farm here on the right. Here's our pond. Uh, our property goes back here to Bull Hill. And here's Dickinson Hill Road uh, coming out. Here's Peter Laird's house. And uh, we go down past Melanie Chorak's house. And this, it's dirt road here. And Mount Esther is off to the, to the left. But this is pretty much our property in the middle of this. And this is what the topo map looks like. And this is what the LIDAR looks like. So we'll switch back and forth. So you can see this is the boundary lines put on by the, the town in uh, the parcels that we own. And here's, here's the grid with some of the, the fields and the woods we looked at before. And then this is the blue, the yellow lines are the property lines and the blue lines are walls that I know exist because I have st stood on them and seen mm -hmm. them. So we'll switch back and forth. There's the LIDAR. There's, there's the walls. So if you, if you just concentrate even on this funny shape in the middle here, this sort of L, upside down L shape and watch it switch back and forth, there's walls, there's not. And so you clearly what you're seeing in the LIDAR really is a wall and not a something else. And the walls, you know, they're much more to the left. So often the property lines or the parcel lines are as in this neck of the woods anyway, and I suspect in much of this town and, and not East Whateley, but the upper part of the town is um, walls built on, on the property lines because of the agricultural efforts of the people who came before us. So here's Mount Esther. It doesn't have much features on it because there's not much happening here. We've got 
a little bit of Dickinson Hill Road here. That's Melanie Chorak's house here. And now way over on the west is Jimmy Nolan Road, which is the back of Mike Mahar's uh, farm. But we've got all kinds of topography happening here with Mount Esther. But if we look close at Mount Esther, again, you look closely, you start to see these spidery lines going across. You see them here and up here. Here's one that goes completely over the mountain in a, just a straight line. Irregardless of the gullies and the impediments, it's going right over and it keeps going off the map. Here, I've highlighted ones that I've actually seen and you can see them when you're, if you're on the road walking, you can look up in the woods and see those walls going off in a straight line. And here's the parcel map. So if you switch back and forth, you can see those walls are built right on top of what are old um, property lines. And so this doesn't fit uh, Zach's um, criteria of it being at a certain aspect or a certain elevation or a soil type or anything. And that's because I don't think he was aware or thinking about this other use for walls as being, um, you know, containers for, uh, for, for livestock, because that has to be what these are. Yeah. Unless they were made by aliens. So, Alice, this is really, this is great. <laughs> um, <laughs> But you I, start adding up the lines, you know, of just, I was trying to figure out, I could probably, there's a, there's in the mass maps, there's a um, measuring tool, you know, you, I could start adding up just on our property. This is miles. And I mean, many, many miles of walls just on our patch. I can't even imagine how many miles of walls. What do you think, Alan, in this town? Oh yeah. It's, people have a lot uh, of time Three, three cool. figures, it, you know, yeah. way up. So so I, I in the drop down menu when you were when you were live, not looking at your beautiful photographs. Yeah, I can go um, back to it. Um, I think I there was a tab that interested me almost yep. as much as your folder called Beaver's Ephemera or something like that, which I'm <laughs> alchemy. Beaver's alchemy, which yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. deeply interested in. That. But but let's that's a let's book I'm working on. So and go back to that's my, that's my next book, Donna. <laughs> uh, you want to go to mass maps? Let's see. All right. So um, this is what you get when you go to the homepage. Yeah, there was a drop down in. I, I'm not sure which section it was in, in the in this the view that you had started with. Um, well, here are the major topics. <laughs> yeah, I, I see. There was there was a drop down called something like go into topographic maps. USGS topographic maps. There was one that said circa 1900. Yep. Can you see what that does for us? Have you looked at that? We can. We can certainly look. Uh, it may. It says coastal, so I have a feeling it's. So not it may not be. Country. It may not be the whole yeah. state. Yeah, it may not be the whole state, but yeah. there are options for the different dates of topo maps. Um, there is an aerial photo that goes way back to 19. Not here. Uh, yeah. 1990s, which is pretty interesting because that's getting to be, you know, a while ago. And so you can, you know, as I say, you can overload, you can overlay these things and kind of switch back and forth. Um, but it's, it's just, it's endlessly interesting to explore. Well, thank but you so much. Infrastructure, you know, look, look at the choices here, all kinds of things. Some stuff we don't need to find the lighthouses in Waitley. We can probably right. do it ourselves. Probably not. Um, but, but, you know, the physical resources are interesting. So I just encourage you to play with this because if you're, if you know, like Derek, you're interested in where the cellar holes were on Grass Hill, um, you can clearly see where those are by, by doing, um, by doing the light. It's this, it's under, it's, sort of hidden under images and it's shaded relief from LIDAR. And so the, the, the property maps are probably the same maps that our assessor's office uses, right? Yes. Yes, I when I was down at the intersection between, you know, where Chestnut Lane, Chestnut Plain joins Pantry at the Hatfield line yesterday, I was using the assessor's maps and was um, uh, taken aback when I saw that they have someone has put a pin that reads Waitley Dickinson Library and it is at the bridge over over Westbrook. <laughs> right. Um, 
So I was kind of hoping we have something more. Well, I, I you know, haven't decided you know, whether to ask there's, about that. I, I'm going to have to go in a minute because I am now in charge of putting the chickens away before it gets dark, and I'm sorry to leave you guys. But but I but here is here is um, West Waitley and the reservoirs, the lower one and the upper one, right? Right. You see the water here, and here's the road that goes out to Nash Hill, and so um, I'll just show. Is it is it Grass Hill that's here? Check this out. Here's this abandoned road. This is where Derek, you know, talks about exploring. Here's a cellar hole and another cellar hole and not just cellar holes, but this whole remnants of a stone wall system that you would never know was there from walking Because it's around. so dense, because it's but so it tells dense. You that at one time, yeah. there were people living here who got real busy um, turning this mountain into a farm. But see how the cellar holes show up clearly as rectangular blips here, yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can, and here, here we go out north. So it's just, it's really fun to look around. All this Esker Very action, cool. for this is glacier deposits here, making these little vermiculate forms. That's the glacier at work. So that's my, my little one minute tutorial on LIDAR and how it's useful. Well, thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for discovering it. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry I have to go. Is there anything else important that I need to pitch I, I don't in? know. I don't think so. Do we have other business? Not for me. I think we could. One we thing could. is, you know, for the hidden history people, you know, if you're talking about Joe Blow's house that used to be on, you know, Straits Road somewhere, but we don't know quite where. It would be worth contemplating, you know, going over to that section of town and looking at the house pads to see how they match up with the existing houses by just switching back and forth from, you know, the modern aerial view to that. Right. See there's house pads there that don't have a house on them anymore. Well, what I've been thinking of through your whole presentation is I, I had yesterday or last night decided we have to stop accumulating material for human history. <laughs> and now you've punched a hole in that notion. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. have exploded yeah. that notion. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm sorry I have to go. Okay. Talk Thank you. you. Yeah. I hope Thank you. Go. Okay. Bye. Okay. That was really interesting. That's fun. It's it is kind of funny that we spent a fair amount of time couple of years ago talking about how to get access to LIDAR and then there it is. But maybe it wasn't as openly accessible. No, it wasn't there. Because I have seen Scott, I have been in meetings with Scott Jackson and seen him use this for his, you know, for conservation commission purposes. If you know how to use it. But I certainly had the, and I, I had the impression he had some, that his access was through UMass and not. It probably uh, was. You need this, you need special software to, to look at this stuff, unless you put it on a web page, in which case this is all hidden in the background. But uh, it's all it's neat stuff when you can look at it and actually plot it on the map. It's, it's fun. But but Allison doesn't have special software. No, she's using the existing maps, the maps that require a lot of software to produce, because the maps are just made from airplanes from a survey and LIDAR images, and the, the LIDAR has to be processed specially to remove all the trees and do all sorts of stuff. So there's a lot of work that's done before it gets to be an image that can be attached to a map. And nobody had done the work until very recently to actually pin this stuff down and, and tie it to something that was publicly available. And that's what we're seeing. So what will be interesting, um, and um, whatever Zach shows us, we will be grateful, obviously, because, <laughs> you know, but it will be interesting to see whether what he shows us is what Allison has just shown us, or if he had, because he seemed to, certainly gave me the impression he was using something that he, he needed to be in his lab at UMass to, to get to. So, I mean, we don't know, we'll see next month. Yeah. Right. Okay, do we have any other business? Not for me. Okay, well, let's well, say next goodbye. Meeting. Next Good meeting. Uh, the next meeting is on, I think it's on March 21st. That's five. Good. Yeah, February. Because like February, that's the way February and March work, <laughs> right? Yep. Except 
every four years. Yes, it's March 21st at 5 p.m. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Bye.